Well, welcome back to the Pastor Pod. We're glad you're here for another episode. And uh, I'm Josh, living in Venice, Florida, here with my good friend Jay, who is back to the Sunshine State. And uh, glad you're with us again, Jay, for another another podcast. Yeah, always a fun time, especially when we jump on and we're able to carve out some time and chat and just have some open, healthy dialogue um, about life, about uh, you know things that are happening, about ministry, about what it's like to be a pastor and things of that sort. And so Josh, I know you and your family are getting ready for a little getaway uh, with some family. Uh, You looking forward to that? Yeah. Like I think when this podcast comes out, we probably have just finished. uh, But right now as a recording, we're preparing to go away for about three nights and my brother's going to come up and my mom and dad are coming down and we're going to stay on St. Augustine beach. And my sister-in-law has been awesome to, uh, let us rent one of her places for a really good price. And so we're, we're going to have a great time right before school starts. Just one last getaway before the, before the new fall kicks off. So we're looking forward to it. Kids are excited, but it's kind of crazy how summer, summer has has definitely been long because it's just been brutally hot. But at the same time, it feels now like we're, we're starting to like speed up like, okay, we only have like two weeks till school. Right. You know, it's, you kind of start feeling that, Like, okay, we got a lot to do. (laughs) So it's funny you say summer's been long. Um, If my kids were listening to this podcast, they would tell you summer's been short. It's all about perspective, Josh. Uh, That's right. My kids kids didn't get out of school until June 22nd. And here we are, August 10th, going back to school. They wouldn't normally go back to school until the end of August, beginning of September, maybe even. Uh, Actually, they would go back to school the beginning of September and they would have a short week and get a three-day weekend. That's typically how they would do it. And so they're missing, they're getting gypped a month of their summer. They are. We've been kind of moving and running to ensure they get some summer because otherwise they don't get anything. Um, And it's crazy. So Josh, just real quick, I know I'm throwing this at you without preparation, but I got a question. What is, uh, what's one of the funnest things you did this summer with your fam? Uh, Anything fun jumped out that you're like, Hey man, that was, that was a blast. Yeah. We earlier in the year, we, we got away and had a great trip, like really almost like the week after uh, school was out. So that was a lot of fun. And we just had a blast uh, getting away um, having some just really good time together. Um, really for us, it's been spending days together. Like when I'm off or when we're free, we, we just spend the whole day together. We call it family fun day. Typically it's my day off on Fridays and we just make the, make the most of it. So, you know, really we've had a lot of good quality time this summer. Um, we That's good. had, we've had camps, you know, the kids went to their first kids camp where they went away for three nights, which was a big deal for Mike and Hannah. And we've they've never done that before. So they were super excited about that. Then we had our huge mega camp for our whole community with 300 plus kids that came and shared the gospel throughout the week and saw um, some great decisions for Christ this last week. And uh, we're still recovering from the from last week because <laughs> it's brutal, man, brutally fun and tiring. But man, they've had a great summer, I, and I, I I've had a good one too. But you know, as a, as an adult, it's not the same, right? I mean, summer no. doesn't mean the same. <laughs> I feel like sometimes so. I'm 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 doing everything I can to like make the fun experience for my kids, and I'm going. I I don't I I, I don't know. I sometimes run out by the time I end of summer. I'm like, okay, I'm out of ideas now. I'm out of ideas. <laughs> so. Anyhow, as we've mentioned, though, Josh, summer is coming to an end. Um, Time is getting away. And before we know it, we're going to be back in to our fall and school year. And 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 whether we like it or not, naturally, what happens is the the clock ticks and seasons happen. And that 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 demands and almost springboards most of our our communities into a different type of rhythm so we go you know it's kind of a change of season change of uh, of routines change of a lot of things and if you're in church a lot of times what you'll notice during the summertime you get these dips where um, families are on vacation they're traveling their kids are out of school there's not this set thing that's holding them um, holding them um, in one place and so there's some freedom there and uh what it leads to is now is thinking through, especially as pastors, we're all thinking through this concept of, okay, the fall is here. And now it's time for us to really think about how we're going to um, maximize what the fall looks like mm-hmm. and maximize our time at the fall. Now on two, two hands, I'm, I'm, as I'm talking through this, I'm thinking if, if you're listening to this and you're a pastor and you haven't thought through the fall, you're a little behind the ball. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but you're a little behind. Um, you're not, you're, 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 
it doesn't mean you can't maximize the fall, but it just means you're a little bit behind on your planning. You're a little bit behind on your uh, going forth. And so that being said, uh, Josh, today, what we want to do is take a, just a short, short time here and, and think through as a pastor, as a church, um, whether you're, you know, a pastor on staff, or if you just attend a church, how can you maximize this next season where uh, families and individuals kind of get back into a rhythm of work and school and mm -hmm. and these routines i know i'll speak first of all for my family we've been kind of on a little bit of a uh, a break here i purposely plan between my move and the transition to take the month of july off now don't be jealous if you're sitting there going wow it must be nice to get a month off uh for vacation don't be jealous if you're listening um it, it has been a lot of work uh during that month of transitioning and moving and getting your stuff and finding the broken pieces and all that good stuff and learning uh you know new ways and new new territory but um I know for my family, our routine has been kind of thrown out of whack and that, 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 that could take a toll on some uh, individuals. It can take a toll on you mentally, physically, um, and things like that. And so there is something to be said about routines and the healthiness that comes with routine. So we're heading back into a season of routine and things of that sort. So Josh, tell me, um, you know, as a pastor, what did you think about when you were thinking through the fall, when you're thinking through planning the fall? organizing your thoughts, organizing your preaching schedule, you know, just, mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of wide open as you and your mm -hmm. team sat down. Cause I know it was just, it wasn't just you, it was a team concept, but what are some of the things, what are some of the, you know, think, you know, thousand, you know, 10,000 foot view here mm -hmm. that you thought of when you thought about, Hey, how are we going to gear up and get ready for the fall? Well, I was talking to a school teacher the, the other day, and we, we always try to do something for teachers. Uh, we're planning on the first Sunday of August of giving a gift that day and praying over them and all the faculty and everyone that teaches, right? And so that's just a, a, a nice touch and a way to support them. But they, they mentioned that August was a bigger kickoff than January was for them as a teacher, because January, you're kind of in the middle of the year, right. although it's a new year. August is almost like a bigger restart or a refresh to their schedule. And so I'm looking at August more now as really the kickoff of the year than I am January from just yeah. different perspectives, probably younger families, maybe not every age group, but like for teachers and kids and families, uh, August is huge. And if people move into this the area, they're trying to, you know, I'm, they're trying to get used to the schools and the schedules and meet people. So for us, we're, we're looking at, you know, a sermon series to kick off August called the Bible doesn't say that. And we're going to have some fun with statements or phrases people say that we think are in the Bible, but aren't. And so we're going to walk through that. It's a great series to kind of speak to the different um, maybe struggles or pressure points that people have during busy seasons or new times of, of their life. And I know for us as a family, we, we do a, love the rhythm of summer because we can have more freedom to do things. But I feel like we're filling our days, like, like you were saying, Jay, with things we need to do because we need to do these things to have a good summer. And so there's right. almost like a pressure or a stress that I felt at times. And I know that if you're a family or if you have kids, you feel like I, they have to have this experience or they didn't have summer. Of course, I go back to my childhood. My parents were like, go outside and you can come back at this time. If you need water, there's, you know, <laughs> the garden like, hose. Just go, just go out there and play. And, and I know that a lot of our kids do that. But at the same time, I feel like there's, there's more pressure we put on ourselves to fill up our calendars so that we have this perfect experience. When I think our kids need more of us as parents than they just need stuff or, or even to go on the, on the trip. But yeah, for us, like for me in the church, like, we're, we're, we're revamping, we're getting ready to lay out a series of our vision, we're going to refresh kind of our, like our vision frame for the whole church. So I'm really excited about like, looking at this year saying, this is a great time to like, get everybody on the same page, unify the church again, uh, gather new people into groups, really start more small groups, so some more people find c community, and really just um, make the most of our time. So and I, I'm, I do like some rhythm, I do like having some like a little bit of a schedule. I'm not like a real tight schedule guy, but I do like when I, there's a healthy rhythm. Um, what, what do you think? I mean, do, are you a rhythm well, guy? Think, think, do you, do you like chaos or, you, you know? 
so I live in chaos. I do enjoy chaos. Um, I'm a guy who the more plates I have spinning, the I think the more productive I am, the more creative I am, the the actually the more I get accomplished, the more plates I have going. So I do enjoy chaos. Mm -hmm. But even within the midst of chaos, there's rhythm there. There is some form of okay. This is my this is my weekly grind. This is what it looks like, and I believe most people, by nature, we 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 do enjoy some form of um, direction, some form of rhythm in life. And so, mm -hmm. as a church, this is a season, um, and you can talk about the seasons that go through. Like people go through seasons, and as as a community, yeah. chances are your community goes through seasons. Um, I'm like you, I have always, I think for the last, you know, six, seven years, I thought of as August of more of a, you know, new season and kickoff for a year, quote unquote year, than I did um, even January, um, even my church budget as a church planter, uh, we didn't start until July, our church budget started in July and ended in June, we didn't do the whole, we didn't do the physical year, we did the, we had a financial year. So everything triggered around this time of year. And I think it's huge because, as you said, um, families are looking. I think this is what they're looking for. They're looking for some form of stability and schedule and routine. This is why your consistency of attendance is going to become more of, a, you know, there's going to be more of a rhythm in attendance um, at church. It's going to be more of a rhythm of participation at church as people are, are going. Because again, they don't have the freedom necessarily to run off every single weekend. That can get exhausting. Get off work on yeah. Friday. I'm going to be gone Saturday and Sunday. Come back late Sunday night. Then I get the kids to school. There's only so long that can go on before the kids start feeling it. Right. Because again, you have homework and things of that sort. Um, most people are limited in their vacation as well. So we eat up and we chew up a lot of our vacation during the summer. And so now there's this chance where, okay, I've got to earn, you know, people are banking up now their vacation for another season. That being said, as a church, there's a real opportunity here for us to be very super, super intentional with how we set up the rhythm of our church. We set up how mm -hmm. we operate. You said a couple of things that are really important that, um, you know, all pastors kind of maybe even know, but maybe this is a good reminder. Uh, first and foremost, you know, uh, the way we teach. All right. Uh, we know that a lot of things are driven vision. A lot of things are driven by what we teach and what we're doing as a, a, a collective gathering of the community. Mm -hmm. And so this is a great time to kick off something new to teach, something fresh, something exciting, um, something that's going to really uh, I, I like. What was the title of your series? Uh, what the Bible doesn't uh, say. The, that, Bible the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that. So the Bible doesn't catchy. say that. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. You know, OK, the Bible well, I found say a few that. ideas gonna, and we're going to tweak it to fit us and. Uh, different churches have done similar things or like uh, I've, I've seen some churches do, you know, half truths um, or, you know, things Jesus never said. There's a lot of ways you can kind of come at a cultural or even like a church, a churchy thing that people believe that isn't biblical. So uh, there's a few that we're going to cover that I grew up hearing from people. And there's right. many that I'm not covering because I don't have enough time. And I think it gets really right. redundant. But like, you know, every time you go to heaven, you get angel wings or you know, God will never give you more than you can handle. Uh, you know, God only helps those who helps themselves. Uh, being minute, good is good enough. Stuff like that. Are you saying God will give us more than we can handle? Yeah, I am saying that. Yeah, oh it'll be a fun word. message. Actually, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna cover that week one because everybody's going back to school, so it'll be kind of funny to have some fun. They just kind of lean into that, you know, as parents and teachers and kids and families. But yeah, I think you're right. I mean. We have to we have to be strategic in these seasons because people are wanting, like you said, support. But I do think with travel sports, it's huge down here. I'm sure it's huge everywhere. Um, but like there are people that they will come in the summer more, but then you won't see them for months because they're traveling. They're with their kid. I mean, they are they are going to Orlando where you live, Jay, on all these trips. And they're <clears throat> typically for months at a time, you won't see them. And I don't know how they do it. Like, I don't know how emotionally, like financially, um, the everyday family in America can keep up with that pace. Um, but some do it and some enjoy it. And I'm not down in it. I'm just saying there are a lot of people that they go straight from a full summer to straight, fall, straight up crazy spring fall where their kids are almost like they're like semi pro athletes. And they're dropping thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on hotels and travel. And I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm asking the question, like, as a dad myself, I don't know how I could, how I could 
make that happen? Even if I wasn't a pastor, like how could I, how could I be a good dad, a good husband? Like how, how would I manage my time? How could I do all that and still be right. like, I think hopefully effective or even have time to serve God, serve people. Um, so I'm not, like I said, that's just one example that we live in an interesting culture in America where we will fill our time with what we value. And so really uh, a leadership value is you will do, I will do what we value most. I mean, we all agree. So then you have to look at your calendar, your, you know, your bank account and say, okay, what, what do I want my family? What do I want my kids? What do I want my fall or my spring uh, to produce? Like, what is my goals? And are my goals right. kingdom driven or are they just driven by the pressure of the, of the community I'm in? or the friends I hang out with, like, do I have to buy that new thing? Do I have to go on that, that getaway? Do I have to have those things to feel worthwhile and important and, and valuable? And I think that's a big struggle for people, especially yeah. young families. There's like this, you got to have it, you know, for some parents, we just feel like everything has to be perfect. Our kids have to have a perfect everything. And I think that sometimes you release that control and just go, you know what, we're going to do our best to love our kids and and have fun and do stuff in the summer and make the most of it and, and bless them and, and celebrate with them. But at the end of the day, you learn the most when you go through the, the, the difficulties of life and not shielding them from that. So um, of course now I'm rambling, but I do feel like with school coming back, there's all this pressure that, right. No, I did think you I have think the great hitting. summer. Did you, you know, are you going to do this? How many sports are you going to, I mean, literally at our mega camp, you know, I was talking to different dads, like, Hey, what sports are you guys doing? Like, how are, what do you guys like? I'm thinking about this for Micah and think about this for Hannah. And you have to think through it because if not, you will go ahead and sign up for all these things without really assessing. Can I do it? <laughs> well, you know, in our family, we have a rule and uh, if this rule is kind of based off of just finances, <laughs> there's mm -hmm. only so much we mm -hmm. can do. So every, with every sport, with every sport comes a cost, right? Whether it be, you know, travel ball, whatever, it comes a cost. And so for all of our kids, we said, look, you're going to do, you can only do one sport at a time. Now I know some parents are going, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, there, you know, some sports overlap for us. We're like, Hey, choose one that you really want to put all your effort into. You want to enjoy. And then if you didn't like it, Hey, next go around, choose a different one. Um, go with it. Right. And so right now we, we half of my, almost half of my family, actually majority of my family has chosen. Michaela will do softball, which is kind of normal horse sport that she's been invested in the last seven years. Um, Zachary is going to do baseball, um, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, he's done it once before, but he hasn't really taken, but he, that's what he says. Um, Rhett is going to do T-ball. So this is his first year. He's going to get into T-ball. And then Louis uh, has not decided yet. Louis is going to wait. He's going to get into some sports at his middle school because he's realized he can play soccer, or football, or bas basketball. So he's like, hey, I don't know which one I want to do yet, but he's going to do something at school. And mm -hmm. then Adeline, we just have to find, she's our drama, wants to get into acting and drama. So we have to find something for her. But they've all kind of chosen what they're going to do. And then they know they're only going to do one. That's what mm -hmm. they're going to do. And that helps us. What that does, that sets up boundaries. And I think it's really important as you're even looking at the fall, if you're listening and you're like, hey, you know, how does this apply to me? I'm not just a pastor on staff. Setting up boundaries and knowing where, hey, look, we want to set up boundaries because in order for us to maximize, we can't do everything. That's Trying right. to do everything, we're not going to be able to do anything really, really well. You've heard mm -hmm. that saying. It's It, it happened. Mm -hmm. You know, that saying has been done around millions, millions of times. But if you try to do everything, you're not going to do anything really, really well. And so set mm -hmm. those boundaries and then set your priorities, almost setting short-term goals. We only think mm -hmm. about goals in January time frame. But what about mm -hmm. goals you're now? Really, you're really, yeah, I'm you going, should think August. Like, it's yeah. a restart. It's a restart going of our into season. the fall. Yeah. What are my goals? What would I like to accomplish before Christmas? Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. again, again, Christmas season then gets into like almost a mini holiday season is almost like a mini summer because people are chaotic during that it's, time as well, is, right? It it's is. like a mini summer. And then in yeah. January, it's almost a reset for spring. It's almost another reset, right? Well, and, and this is in here, about school when, doesn't start till like, it is. And we don't start school till like January the 10th or something. I so you have a, this, yeah, it's, like yeah. the 8th or so. So it's for Florida, we have a pretty long uh break there which just i'm not complaining but it's right but that's what i'm getting at it's this is the rhythms that you're going to naturally find in life and so we that's could have right. this we could we could replay this podcast and just remove <laughs> we could figure out how to remove fall and just say spring and the same podcast would apply that's in the right. spring 
it's, you know, setting boundaries and setting priorities, setting goals. Mm -hmm. What do you want to accomplish? What do you want your family? You know, where, where do you want your family to grow? And here's mm -hmm. the thing is when you get into this, and if you're a Christ follower and you get into this idea of thinking through what kind of goals do I want to set? And if, if Christ is not a part of that, then there's, there's, there's some deeper lying yeah. struggles and, and things yeah. you need to work through. But if Christ is a, a goal setting, this is where like, okay, we've been kind of, maybe you have been a little bit loose in your attendance and engagement over the summer. Hey, I'm not here to criticize you for that or even say there's, you know, you know, it's horrible. Okay. Now's a chance for you to reset, hit the reset button. Pastors, if you're listening, you have families that should be hitting the reset button. And we have an opportunity mm -hmm. now to maximize that with our teaching yeah. and building of community. So I would think through the process of if you're in a church setting and you're looking at, hey, how do I maximize the fall here? Is is what are you doing right now to maximize the setting of your community within your church? Whether that be groups or you know small groups, life groups, Sunday school, whatever you call it, your church, whatever you do, what are you doing there in that area of reset to help families connect, help people connect, individuals reconnect in yeah. a biblical community to study God's word, to pray, and to live life together? Um, those are some things that you should be thinking about during this season as well, because it's really important. And mm -hmm. people may show up and may be more consistent. Okay, let's 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 give them the most of their time here and how mm -hmm. we're going to maximize that time within biblical community. Now hear me what I'm not saying is you need to max out every hour of their Sunday because we also know that biblical community is more than just a Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right? So how are you maximizing that biblical community? Josh there at the bridge, have you guys thought through that at all of like, you know, what is what does that community look like beyond a Sunday, especially when it comes to rethinking yeah. the fall or maximizing thaw, the fall? Have you yeah. guys thought about that? Yeah, we definitely are, are looking at well, we need to start new groups with new leaders. And so we have, you know, our, our pastor, Derek, and our team, we're all working together. He oversees our groups. And so we're redeveloping, you know, training. We're looking at having a huge lunch with leaders. We're looking at who are the people that could start, that could come out of a group and start a new group. And then people that are new that really new people are best to lead new groups. Um, we're also looking at how do we multiply groups in a godly way, not splitting groups, not, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, we're going to, we're going to split it up. That, that never really works well. Uh, but if a, if a group has a missionary heart to always be hospitable and wel welcome to people, that's huge. So we're really praying and we're asking our, our leaders to be, to really be sacrificial because we've seen growth, people, new people coming, but we also want to have groups available and people that are on, on, you know, on call to like jump in and start new groups, especially where the people are coming from. And so we, we don't have Sunday school for adults. We have groups during the week. We have our office that we lease, you know, we're a portable church. So we lease an office. We meet at a school on Sunday. So we, we typically meet in homes at the office, coffee shops, uh, places like that. So it's been great to see that grow, but we've got to be ready. I think as pastors and leaders to be on the, be proactive and not reactive. I really am praying that we'll have multiple groups begin and we already have the people ready to go. And, and that's happening. But I wish, I wish that every church had like, you know, whatever size your church or whatever you're expecting, you have enough people that are already like tapped on the shoulder, trained, equipped to then receive those that are needing community and saying, Hey, come, come into my house. We're going to, we're going to grow, grow in the Lord in this, in this season. That's to me, a goal I have for our church that will always be ahead of the growth. Not to say that we'll, we'll always have it planned out perfectly, but we have people that are ready, willing to open up their lives to new people. That's good. That's good. And that's just super important that we're ready for that. And that's another thing is, you know, this preparation part is, and I said early on, as we started the podcast, if you haven't thought about the fall as a pastor, you may be a little bit behind. Um, but I want to encourage you for a minute, because again, you may be a little bit behind, but there are things that you can do starting today. Uh, you can get, you can get and connect with your team leaders, whoever they may be, whatever size church you're at. Some of those, some of you may be staff, you may have staff, others, you may have, uh, you know, people who are just on a, you know, volunteer team leaders, um, connect with them, talk with them, begin having that conversation. You've got a couple weeks now still before, uh, or maybe mm -hmm. when this podcast goes, it's only going to be about a week, but take some time and spend some mm -hmm. time praying through that and, and beginning to try to uh, maybe play a little catch up, uh, when it comes to preparing for the fall. 
Um, but really bottom line is I think what we're, what we're wanting to encourage everyone with, uh, with this podcast is listen, this is a, this is, this is a, we're entering into a new season. It's a season that can be maximized. You can, you can take advantage of every last bit of what is being thrown at you because naturally what's going to happen in this rhythm of life is people are going to be, uh, you know, maybe engaging more, attending uh, more. And if you're ready and you're, you're willing to step in and say, Hey, what can we do? How can we meet people where they are at and help them to take that next step of faith? Um, that's how you continue to grow your church. That's how you continue to connect mm-hmm. with people. And um, this is a great season to do that in. So Josh, I think that's really uh, where I come from. That's really the, the, the big picture of, of, of what this next season represents and what it looks like as people are reengaging mm-hmm. uh, in the church. Um, you got any final words? And, and any I thoughts? Would, yeah, I would add just, I would, I would challenge the pastors and, I, and I'm, I'm asking, and I'm speaking this to myself to, to then challenge your people to pray, invest, invite, um, reach out to people uh, that are hurting, that need a church that are not connected in, in a local church in your area, you know, train them, uh, pray with them, invite them to really have a heart for their community this fall, because I think, I think we're hopefully getting past the 14th wave of COVID or whatever wave we're on. Right. Right. And, and regardless of that, we have people that really, 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 really need community. I had a a really awesome guy the other day tell me that uh, him and his wife have really struggled because they haven't found community in like, you know, a little over a year and they're in our area, but we hadn't had a chance to meet them or whatever but just how much they missed it and how much they need it. And, you know, it kind of hit me again, just how important we need to be in community and isolation is where the enemy attacks, where you feel discouraged and depressed and we don't carry each other's burdens. And so we're praying and I pray that you're praying as well in your church and your, whether you are a pastor or you, you volunteer, or you're a leader in your church, who, who are you personally praying for investing in? whether it's a neighbor, a coworker, people that you're going to go to school with, the kid, you know, who your kids go to school with, who are the people that God you already know or that will come along that, that desperately need life change through Christ. And I'd really pray that we would all have a heart that's receptive, hospitable, and open to say, man, I'm opening my life up to new people this fall, and I want God to use me to welcome them, connect them. And I want to serve. I'm willing to, and, and I'll say this, you know, the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So I would say above all, Jay, I think we've kind of hit this off and on today is prioritize your priorities. Like ask the question this fall is what I'm focused on is what I'm filling my calendar up is what I'm spending my money on. Is it number one above and above and beyond the kingdom of God and building it? Or is it just trying to just make it and trying to just pack as much stuff as I can in so that somehow I can have this perfect school fall for my family. And hopefully we can do all those things and check all the boxes. And if we can do all that, then we'll be happy. Then we'll be content. Then we'll be at peace. And really what I'm learning mostly through mistakes is I don't find that by being busier. It's fine more by being relational being at peace, spending more dedicated time with my heavenly father and then serving others. So those are just a few many thoughts here at the NJ, but that's good. No, there's good. That's good. And we'd love to, <laughs> we'd love to hear from you. Maybe you've got some thoughts on what you're doing this fall. Uh, love for to hear from you. So drop those in an email to us. You can email us at the pastor at gmail.com. Uh, connect with us on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all those things. And again, our prayer, uh, Josh and I, as we're praying through this and um, we, we're asking God to really give you, um, you know, empower you to be the leader that, you know, he's called you to be in your community and in your church. And this fall would be a, um, you know, a, a, a good shift and your ministry to where God would continue to, to use you in a powerful, powerful way. And so, um, listen, take advantage of the fall. It is here, whether we like it or not. Uh, so take advantage of it, but from Josh and myself here at the pastor pod, we thank you for, uh, again, diving in and jumping into a good conversation with us this week. And we hope to see you back next week. Have a great weekend.